Hello, it's Scott Manley here. On Friday night, I took my plane out with the idea of you know, getting some skills, getting some practice, and seeing some sights in Northern California. And, well, when you take off, there's just one sight that can be seen from all over Northern California, and that is the Parks Fire. This monster wildfire is already over 350,000 acres after a couple of days. It's now the seventh biggest wildfire in state history. It started on Wednesday, and by Friday night when I was flying, it was 300,000 acres. Apparently, it was started by somebody who pushed a burning car into a ravine. And thankfully, as of now, there have been no fatalities, only minor injuries, but thousands of people have been evacuated. California has always had wildfires, and we regularly experience smoke down in the Bay Area, but I've never seen an uh, actual event of this scale before. This fire is so big that it's creating its own weather. The clouds that are rising up from that central mass there, those are what are called pyrocumulus clouds. That is, cumulus clouds that are being driven by the fire underneath. I was flying at over 11,000 feet, and these clouds were clearly a lot higher than myself. I'm estimating, based upon the images, that they were definitely above 20,000, maybe even as high as 30,000 feet, going up above to the, you know, to the altitudes that airliners fly. And to be clear, I am staying outside of the TFR, the temporary flight restriction, which has been set up to allow aircraft to do wildfire fighting. Technically, that uh, only goes up to 10,000 feet, so I could fly over the top and get closer. But, as I said, this activity, this is making its own weather, and the closer you get, the more you're going to get into messy turbulence, the more you could find yourself in serious trouble. This kind of tall... Convective activity looks a lot like thunderstorms to me, and there's no way that I want to get close to that. So, obviously, what's going on is you've got this fire underneath, and it's releasing a lot of heat that's driving the atmosphere upwards. But also, as stuff burns, you're uh, releasing water. Water is coming out of the soil, what little is left, but also when you burn organic material, there's hydrogen in there, and that will form water, which will join the water column. And as that rises up, of course, the water will begin to condense out, releasing more energy and pushing the cloud tops even higher. Sometimes this actually turns into rainstorms or even thunderstorms downwind uh, from this. And there's also cases where uh, you, the dynamics cause you know, harsh downdrafts, which carry embers, which are still burning, which can actually start fires further downrange from this. And, you know, look, to get an idea of just how big this thing is, this is me flying, like, at 140 knots ground speed. I had a tailwind running the video at 10 times speed, and you can see how long it's taking us to fly past this thing. And even from, you know, 10 miles out, it was possible to pick out these hot spots, these flames burning on the flame front as it's moving across the countryside. I'm obviously hand-holding this camera and pointing it, and the plane is on autopilot, to be clear. Uh, but as I zoom out, you just get an idea of the absolute massive scale of this conflagration. It went from nothing to like 250,000 acres in one day, and it's now up at about 350,000 acres with almost no containment. This is the official CAL FIRE map as of this morning, and thankfully most of this area is wilderness area, but yeah, people have lost homes, they've lost property. And you know, you can get an idea of what that looks like from the ground using the cameras that are on the Alert California website. They're you know useful for monitoring weather and wildfire and all sorts of other phenomena. This is just wild. If you look at it, the satellite imagery, this is the initial 24 hours. You can see how this very quickly spread north, covering your know, tens of miles. And from the 25th, that is the Thursday, that's the day after, this flame front is already, you know, 20, 30 miles long. You can see how it's being driven by the winds. This is from GOES-18, which is the geostationary weather satellite situated over the Pacific. And this is undeniably an amazing piece of technology, but it's unfortunate that it's showing us what, for a number of people, is really a tragic event. There's also this uh, this uh, radar reconstruction of the initial evolution of the fire, showing the heat-driven plumes and the smoke, you know, all interacting in the atmosphere based on your know, radar. As you can imagine, there's a lot of uh, aerial attack going on to suppress this fire, but keep it under control. But interestingly, a lot of it is just happening in this southeast area, because if it moves eastwards, it's going to spread into inhabited areas, whereas going to the north, that is wilderness, which is almost all uninhabited. 
these are constantly going in and out of Chico Airport, which, uh, well, this is a few days before the fire, and this is a few days after. You can see how the fire front got really close. Again, I obviously kept my distance from that airport, but you can actually see, if you look very carefully, an aircraft taxiing uh, in the middle of the field, and uh, there's also an aircraft landing just there. Cal Fire have a base operating here where they can rapidly refuel and refill these aircraft with the retardant and send them back out continuously. And if we skip forward a minute, you can see an aircraft in the takeoff area getting ready for its takeoff run, obviously. Um, you know, there's all sorts of aircraft that are used in this, and they obviously have to be pretty capable because they have to carry a lot of mass in terms of water and be able to dump it. I've seen some videos where they, there was an operator of their aircraft explaining that they had a turboprop and for takeoff performance they actually had a water injection system so they would inject water just before the turbine to uh, you know, cool the turbine and allow them to actually put more fuel in and generate more power so they could get off and take off. And also to the top the darkened burn scar is visible. You can see that it came relatively close to people's houses and you can imagine this would have been some concern on a Wednesday night. So look, Friday I set out just to get some practice, get some flying, but as soon as you're airborne this thing was visible from 150 miles away and I, I don't know, I just had to go out and take a look. I had thought that maybe I would fly up to Red Bluff because uh, its airport code is KRBL or Kerbal and that felt pretty, you know, relevant to me. But instead I felt compelled to, you know, take in this monstrous event, like the, it just, uh, it, it's something that staggers belief, takes your breath away. And I should honestly tell you that I think I pay, maybe spent a little too much time taking this in because as I'm coming back I'm beginning to realise that there are some serious clouds starting to move in. The same weather system that is driving the fire is sucking in moist air from over the Pacific and this is forming a cloud, you know, stratus layer over Santa Rosa, Petaluma and getting very close to my home field of NOS in Novato. Now, thankfully as I get there I realise there is a big enough hole in there for me to not just get in but to make a proper pattern entry and remain clear of the clouds. And look, to be clear, before I even decided to do this, I had my exit route planned out. I knew where I could go. I could go out to Vacaville. I knew how I would do it using the navigation system. The winds had not died down, which is unusual, so there was some rough air coming in. One of the nice things about Nosfield is that you do have the highway there, so you know that there's a mountain on the other side of that. You don't want to cross it. You know where the downwind is because of the antennas over to the left there. But yeah, this allowed me to line up and make a rather nice landing and moreover show off what it looks like with the new lighting that we've installed. We've uh, you know, fixed the landing lights, fixed the nav lights and uh, the strobes to make the aircraft legal and flyable at night time. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.